Okay, so I've had several people ask me about troubleshooting steps, things to do. They'd like to just see more troubleshooting instead of just straight to the point repairs. So I thought I would um, try to uh, show this one. This is out of a uh, Samsung Plasma 50 inch. I'm not quite sure of the exact model number. I'll get that for you shortly. But the original board number is a BN Boy Nancy 44-00160A. And uh, on this particular board, it does have a couple of uh, FETs, field effect transistors, that are shorted. I've already taken the two uh, transistors out of the circuit here. And uh, it had a couple other caps that, uh, that were bulged, just like you would see uh, in all the other videos of people changing bulge caps. No big thing there, but... Uh, I thought I would take you through some steps of troubleshooting this uh, circuit board out of the TV. Uh, to try to get it going. Uh, the first thing I uh, recommend is if you don't have one, obviously get an uh, ESR meter. This one's just kind of a little homemade one that we've got. You can buy them. Uh, there's a couple companies that make ESR meters out there. It's ESR stands for Equivalent Series Resistance. And it's just as if you put a resistor in series with your capacitor, so they become uh, pretty useless in circuit. So what I've done is um, I've ESR'd uh, the two main filter caps, and they do definitely check bad. Uh, if you can see by the brand, they are Samwa caps. Had a lot of problems with Samwa caps over the years, particularly like the last four or five. Samsung's been uh, using them pretty much exclusively, and they've been bulging like crazy. So I'm going to start by uh, taking those out of circuit and ESRing them and showing you uh, what what they test like. Okay, so I thought I'd show you testing the ESR capacitors. Uh, the first thing is uh, short the leads together and make sure that the pointer goes to zero. And uh, these are the old capacitors here. The, when you test it with an ESR meter, the polarity is not important. As you can see, this one reads about five to six ohms. This one's about, um, I'd say about four, four ohms. These are the new ones here. Uh, the needle should go right to zero indicating a good capacitor. They both test very good, just like when I short the, the lead together. So let's go ahead and put those in the board. Uh, I thought I'd try to show you uh, one thing that I believe was a uh, partial cause for this failure on this board are these uh, solder connections. These are the rectifier diodes uh, that filter the output of the switching transformer that is driven by the two uh, FET transistors that are shorted. And uh, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look closely, you can actually see little rings around both of them where they have pushed through the board with years of expansion and contraction. So it's got some other ones here. Let's see if I can get the camera into position. There's another set. And there's one more set. There's some other connections on this board that don't look really super good. This is the uh, optical isolate. Anyhow, one of the pins on it has a small ring around it as well, so it's always a good idea to, to do a real close uh, look over of the whole circuit board. So I've got the uh, board out of the set, and I want to try to power it up, so I need to actually force the power supply on, and if you look down here, uh, it gives you the pinouts of what all these pins are, and if you look in the in the far upper left corner, you see that the, uh, I can't quite tell what pin number it is, but the far left pin is labeled power supply on, PS on. And it, normally by applying a voltage to that pin or shorting that pin to ground, depending upon what the current state of it is, you can force the power supply on. As well as if you look over here, the second pin from the left is labeled VS on. That's the sustained voltage, uh, and that's where the, the uh, shorted uh, FET transistors are what drives that voltage. So with the transistors out of the set, I'm going to try to power this up and look and see if I can see the oscillator that drives the FETs to see if it's running or not. Okay, so I've got the board um, AC uh, hooked onto the board, and I'm going to measure the voltage on this one pin that is labeled PS on. It reads 4.2 volts right now. So I'm just going to take a 
higher value resistor. I don't want to short it directly to ground because that can do some damage. This resistor I happen to have is 1,200 ohms. It's just one I just arbitrarily picked out. And I'm just going to short from that to the heat sink, which is grounded. And the power supply powers up. You can hear the relay start. It pulls it down to 2.5 volts. That appears to be enough to start the power supply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack solder this resistor onto the bottom of the board just so anytime I apply power the power supply will power up. Alright so there's my resistor on the bottom of the board just attached to the power supply on pin and it goes to ground. Now we'll address uh, turning the VS on that starts the oscillator. Okay, so pretty much the same thing as last time. Now that I've got the resistor on, I'm going to apply AC power to the board. It clicked on. And let's look at uh, first this pin over here on the far left, which is labeled standby 6 volts. It has 5 volts on it. Oh, it is 5 volts. I'm sorry. Standby 5 volts. The next pin next to it is VS on. And that is low at this point, so it actually is going to need to be forced high. So we can tie another resistor between these two pins to force that VS on line to go high. Okay, so here's my uh, resistor that turns on the power supply and it pulls that voltage down from about four and a half volts to two and a half. This resistor right here is the one that turns on the VS. As you recall, this pin was standby 5 volts, and then this pin was 0. Now it's 4.2, so that's enough to actually start the oscillator. So let's get out the scope and look at some waveforms and see if the FETs are being driven. Okay, so I've got my scope set up here, and I'm just going to put my probe on the uh, gate of one of the FET pads. I don't have the FETs in the set yet, so I'm just going to switch it on and look for a waveform here. That's a good waveform. I've got my scope set where this line right here is actually at zero potential. I'm measuring DC voltage. What I want to see is a pulse that turns the FET on and then a negative pulse that turns the FET off. So FET on, FET off, FET on, FET off. And I want to check the other gate and look for virtually the same pulse. And I see it there. The triggering might be off just a little bit here. We can get it triggered good. So both those look pretty good. I see a little ringing in this one. So this is a transformer coupled power supply, which means uh, the FET driver is not directly connected to the gate of the FET transistor. And so I'm looking at the waveform going into the transformer and it looks very good and square, just like it should. So I think we're going to be good. I'm going to put the FETs in it now and uh, we'll uh, power it up and we'll see what kind of results we get. There was one other thing to note here uh, before I go. Uh, I did a couple other component checks here and I found that a couple of the driver transistors that drive the coupling transformer that drive the FETs were actually uh, defective. I did not have the surface mount so I had to improvise and put a couple standard larger transistors in here as you can see here. But um, using your diode scale on your ohm meter you can go through and test virtually every transistor every diode on this board. There are cases where you'll need to unsolder a part here and a part there like a diode or a low value resistor that goes across it such as uh, on the right hand side of your screen uh, it's labeled 100 which means 10 with a zero multiplier so 10 ohms. It's practically impossible to test this diode right here. You've got to uh, either remove one end of the diode or remove the resistor from the circuit to test it. But I've tested all these uh, diodes and they all test fine. However, these two uh, surface mount transistors were bad. I replaced them with standard and that's uh, got the set up and going here. Just wanted to point out that the voltage measurements on this side of the circuit are referenced from hot ground because we're still on the hot side of the circuit, which means it is connected directly to the AC line, so uh, what I've got here is I've got an isolation transformer right here that I have the TV uh, power supply plugged into as well as 
on the back of my um, oscilloscope here, I've also got another isolation transformer. So the scope actually floats and the power supply floats. So there's no conflict between where I put my ground because I have the scope tied to hot ground. And if I were to have the scope plugged right into the AC outlet with the three prong plug supplied, uh, this would be grounded to the AC line. And if I plug the TV straight into that three prong or just into the AC cord, one side of that is neutral and one side's hot. So it provides a conflict uh, between the scope ground and the power supply and it can really do some damage. So you have to make sure that if you're going to try any of this troubleshooting steps, well, number one, that you uh, know what you're doing as far as isolation goes uh, because you don't want to, like I said, have a grounded scope and plugged in to the AC line not isolated. So make sure you get an isolation transformer somewhere if you want to try any of these troubleshooting steps and also be warned that um, where I have my uh, scope on hot ground, there is about 350 volts right there, and it is uh, those two very large capacitors, so there's a lot of uh, energy stored right there. It can definitely do some damage just if you accidentally were to short from hot to ground. So this is a uh, potentially uh, hazardous situation unless you know exactly uh, what you're doing. So I just wanted to give everybody a fair warning out there when you're working with these plasma power supply boards. They do store a tremendous amount of energy. So I thought I'd talk real quick about FET transistor testing as well. These are the two uh, transistors out of the TV. And if I, if I test from the source to the drain, that one's a dead short. That one's a dead short. Gate to source, they're, they're just totally shorted all the way across here. So let's talk about testing the new FETs, how they should test out of circuit. Okay, so here are the new uh, FET transistors, field effect transistors. And let's see if I can actually get in here and, and do a couple tests. So the first thing we'll do is um, I'm on an anti-static little pad that they're sent in. So I'll make sure we discharge just by touching the probes there. So I just want to look for shorts. There are no shorts right there, so I want to go from the uh, gate to the drain. There's nothing there. I'm going to try to turn the FET on right now by reverse biasing it. Okay, you can see the difference. It reads 0.509 versus 0.390. So if I, if I add a positive voltage to the gate, it will turn the FET on. See, their meter reads 333 there. And then if I add a negative voltage to the gate, it turns the FET back off, 0.510. And of course, these are much higher voltage FETs, so I don't have the proper uh, you know, equipment to actually test it. I'm just using a diode scale. So let's look at the other one. So I'm going to add a positive voltage to the gate, and I'm going to reverse bias test it. 420, turn it off, 509. We'll add a positive voltage. Reverse bias at 340, negative voltage turns it back down. So I'm seeing a difference. So that means that the FET is doing something. You can test uh, FETs. Uh, I'm only giving it approximately one volt of uh, gate drive, and some FETs require up to three to four volts to turn the gate on and the gate off. So as long as you see any kind of a reading differential, then you know that the FET is working. So let's put them in the circuit and we'll see what happens. Okay, so here's our power supply. Got the uh, new FET transistors in it. And let's go ahead and check some voltages. Now this is going to be the VA voltage. Normally that one's somewhere in the 60 volt range. 63 volts. This is VS. This is the one that we were having a problem with. That's usually right around 200 volts. 208 volts exactly. So now all that's left to do is to put it back in the TV and give it a test. All right, so here's our board back in the TV and uh, we're just gonna go up here and show you the panel label for the voltage measurements. We should be looking at 63 and 207 on this one. And 
Let's see what we have. We got uh, 63.5, and on the VS, we're at 207.8. That's pretty darn close to what the panel spec says we need to be at. The board's in the set. It's up and around in here. So I'd say we have another successful repair. Saved us from having to buy a complete uh, power supply board on this one. We probably invested um, with the capacitors, the transistors, the FETs. Um, I'd say this set has $25 to $30 worth of parts in it right now. As opposed to, I didn't even check the price of the whole board, but I know uh, uh, usually you can get a board for... Uh, Anywhere from $125 to $250, depending on who has it, whether it's new, used, or rebuilt. And just out of curiosity, this set is a HPT 5064. Henry Paul Tom 5064.